To begin the repair process for a model 375 and half inch to one inch sizes, first close the inlet and outlet shutoff valves. Next you will open the number two, number three, and number four test cocks to release the pressure from the valve. Unscrew the two screws in the top of the clamp. Lift the clamp upward. You can insert a screw in the middle hole to remove a stuck clamp. Slide the check housing and sleeve toward the inlet ball valve. Lift the check housing up out of the strut assembly. Do not lose the o-ring from the groove at the small end of the housing or the o-ring that sits at the large end around the number one check seat. They may stick against the ball valve or the sleeve. Remove the checks from the housing by pushing on the check visible at the small end of the housing using your thumb or a small screwdriver. Untwist the seat from the spring retainer in a counterclockwise direction. You will want to inspect the rubber on the poppet for cuts or debris. Inspect the sharp edge of the seat with your finger for any damage. If the seat is damaged, you will want to replace the entire check assembly. To remove a damaged seal ring, remove the screw and the retaining washer. For a temporary fix, you can flip the seal ring over to use the smooth side while waiting for new replacement parts. Repeat this process with the second check assembly. Make sure to put stronger spring in the number one check assembly. You will place new O-rings on the seats of each check assembly and lubricate these O-rings. Wipe clean and inspect the inside of the housing. Drop the number two check assembly into the housing. Drop the number one check assembly in next. Turn the number one check assembly to make sure it lines up with the notches in the number two check. Push both assemblies into the housing until they are flush with the front surface. Slide the sleeve off the number one ball valve and clean the face and inside hole. You will want to clean or replace the o-ring and the groove on the number one ball valve. Lubricate the o-ring and slide the sleeve back onto the number one ball valve. Before servicing your relief valve, make sure to check the troubleshooting section of the instructions. The most common cause of discharge from the relief valve is debris in the number one check valve. Unscrew the bolts from the relief valve cover counterclockwise. The cover is spring-loaded, so leave two bolts opposite each other to remove last. Hold the cover tightly in place as you remove these last two bolts. Pull the cover straight away from the check housing. The relief valve cartridge will stay in the cover. Remove the spring. Inspect the sharp edge of the seat with your finger for any damage. A damaged seat can be replaced by pulling outward. To reinstall, you will lubricate the o-ring, then push and twist as you insert the seat into the housing. You will want to clean or replace the small o-ring that sits in the groove between two of the screw holes. Gently pull the cartridge from the relief valve cover. Inspect the seal ring for any cuts or embedded debris. Next, you will disassemble the cartridge by unscrewing the seal ring screw. Inspect the diaphragm closely for wear or holes. Inspect the o-ring on the upper plunger for cuts or damage. For a temporary seal ring fix, you can flip the seal ring over to use the smooth side while waiting for new replacement parts. You will need to clean all the parts or replace damaged parts. Carefully reassemble the cartridge and tighten the retaining screw. Lubricate the o-ring on the upper plunger. Place the spring around the seat in the housing. Insert your cartridge assembly into the spring. Place cover onto the cartridge assembly. You will push the cover toward the housing and make sure the cartridge centers into the seat guide ring and the diaphragm is not pinched between the cover and the housing. Thread two screws into opposite holes by hand while holding the cover in place. Next, thread the remaining cover screws into place. Tighten all screws evenly. Clean or replace the two o-rings that go at the ends of the housing. Insert the two o-rings into the grooves at ends of the check housing. No lubrication is required. Make sure you have the housing facing the correct flow direction and place it down into the strut assembly. Slide the housing toward the outlet ball valve. 
It should rest on the outlet ball valve and sleeve. Push the clamp down into the two slots on either side of the valve, which makes the sleeve slide against the check housing. Put the two screws into the holes in the clamp and tighten. Do not over tighten these screws. It can cause the sleeve to leak. Valve should be tested by trained personnel to confirm that your valve is working properly. Next, you will close your test cocks. Open your number one ball valve slowly to pressurize the valve and inspect for any leaks. Open your number two ball valve a small amount and wait for the system to pressurize. You can fully open the ball valve once the system is pressurized.